Hello and welcome to A Sunny Book Nook. Today I'm going to be doing a mid-month wrap-up because I realized that due to the amount of books I tend to read in a month, it would make more sense for me to do mid-month wrap-ups, especially since at the end of a month it's hard for me to remember the synopsis and the reactions that I personally had uh, for like 20 or 30 books but this month another issue is that I'm in a little bit of a reading slump because I had set a really strict TBR for this month which you can watch um, in the cards above and so this TBR has kind of been suffocating me in its sort of pressure for me to finish all of these things all of these books before the end of February which like you know that's on me. I kind of set myself up for failure with this one, but honestly, I'm gonna keep pushing through and trying to get through these books or as much of them as possible because so far I've only gotten through a few of them and although I've enjoyed the ones that I have gotten through, there's just so many other ones I need to and it's just like this looming presence over me that I'm like, shit, like I need to finish these, like I need to get to these ones. So I'm just going to talk to you about the books that I have already read so I can at least knock off those off my TBR. Oh, also, if you don't know what I'm talking about, um, subscribe so you can not miss out on my other videos. And also, welcome. For this month, I set up a list of books I wanted to read. And it's just been... it's. It's been tough. It's been tough. But right now I'm in the middle of a couple books as I always am. Like my reading habits are always that I'm in the middle of at least like four books at any given time. And uh, I'll talk to you about the books that I actually have read this month. And that includes a comic series. So like several short graphic novels basically. And some literary fiction, some sci-fi. So let's just let's just get right into it. So the first book I read in this month was Brown Girl in the Ring by Nalo Hopkinson. And this book is a sci-fi speculative fiction sort of story set in a city in the future where because of the inevitable climate change apocalypse, like people are living off scavenges there's no such thing as like fresh meat or running water or anything like these things are are gone but there still is like a government that's you know like trying to maintain itself so we're following the perspective of these people who are living within this city and the ruins of it basically and what they do to try to survive and the communities that are built to ensure survival and we're also following someone who is like running for mayor basically on a platform form that develops throughout the story and in this story we are following a couple and the man in this couple is a drug addict and he works for a gang like almost a, a sort of a criminal cabal situation and he gets caught up in a tough situation where he has to capture someone's human heart like kill someone and get their human heart the mother of his child whom he doesn't know he has a kid she is living with like her grandma who is a healer who knows spiritual and scientific understandings of plants and the human body in order to help like heal people from their ailments and so that's how they get by by like growing their own herbs and some of their own fresh food and trading their services with other people for other resources so we're following this couple this grandma and some of the magical and scientific uh, happenings throughout this book and I thought this was a really fun and engaging story that had lots of dark sort of elements and twists to it and explored a lot of different themes of motherhood and survival and addiction and fatherhood and complicated romantic and familial relationships and community i think all these themes are explored really well but the thing is is that it brought me a lot of dread and anxiety while i was reading it because the plot was pretty slow initially and then it picked up the pace real quick and even though the ending was pretty satisfying i just thought that the pacing in general was not to my personal taste and I think that some elements of the character development just felt really unsatisfying to me. So I rated this book three stars. The next book I read this month was Beasts Made of Night by 
Tochi on your Bucci, and this book is another sci-fi fantasy but this is more pure fantasy and it's set in a fantastical society somewhere in Africa I believe and it's like not based on any specific countries I don't I don't think it's a society where there are people who are sin eaters basically your sin embodies itself as a creature um, or a, a beast and so these people who are sin eaters and sin fighters are brought in to kill those beasts and every time you kill one you get like a tattoo on your body permanently marking you for life. We're following this main character who is this dude who works as a sin eater for the palace and as a sin eater for the royal family like he obviously is privy to a lot of the sort of the dark underbelly of the elite in this society because there's this idea of the worshiping of the pure and the holy and the sinless even though obviously no one is really without sin so however because of his position in this society his position at the lowest of the hierarchy he's still treated like shit and is still abused and exploited by the people um in charge and just by different people in the street who you know look down upon him for being what he is we are following him as things unravel and something about possibly a rebellion possibly some like stirrings within the court um, come to be come to fruition and I think that this book as a fantasy novel was mediocre at best to be honest like I thought that the pacing was a bit off because Mm, the first half of the book felt slow to move through and then once things started picking up things uh, really picked up and the ending I don't know it didn't really make sense for me it obviously is like set up to um, further the rest of a series and I don't know I just think that this book incorporated the religious and magical elements of the story really well like I really liked those elements of the world building but I don't know if I liked these characters enough and I don't think that the story itself was memorable enough for it to have been anything more than a three-star book for me which it was. The next book um, in the month of February that I read was The Color Purple by Alice Walker and this was my first five-star book of February because this was incredible. We are following this pair of sisters who are separated at a young age and we're following mainly from the perspective of the sister who views herself as plain, disposable, unintelligent, and who is treated as such for most of her life. This entire book is framed in letters, and initially it is letters to God, as in these extended prayers about this main character's own life and the daily struggles she faces, the abuse that she faces from both white society and the men in her life. Because it's a set in like rural Georgia and the early 20s, 20th century all of these dynamics of violence and tragedy are these day-to-day -day experiences for our main character and it's so so sad to see it all play out but like it's just so gripping as well and there were points of this book that like moved me nearly to tears and I think that the relationships and the love and the characters and the connections they had with each other and the development that they all experienced was just so beautiful and gorgeously rendered. I adored this book and I think that it is like an American classic basically for a good reason and wow I, I just love this a lot. The next book I read in the month of February was Freshwater by Akwiki Amezi and this book I've heard so many good things about and I've loved Akwiki Amezi's other books Pet and The Death of Vivek Oji but this book kind of fell short for me. I understand what the author was trying to get to and the exploration of both mental health and the idea of like personality and the self that combined with spirituality the incorporation of those mystical and religious elements into the characters um, and I know that this book is also like semi memoir which is really interesting and even though I think that this book was like really ambitious and it encompassed a lot of wide-ranging ideas and concepts in a really interesting way it just personally wasn't engaging like for me as a reader because I think that psychological complexity of the story just kind of 
went over my head in its obscurity, in its complexity, um, and I feel bad about that, but also, like, this just wasn't a book that I enjoyed reading, per se. It was, like, tough to get through, and there are books that I've read before that are like that, where it's tough to get through. I mean, even, like, The Color Purple was like that for me, where it's, like, really hard to get through, but it's still a really good book because the payoff and the emotional sort of entanglement that you undergo is just so intense, but that just really wasn't my experience with Freshwater, but I still can acknowledge that it is a really well-written story, and it's very well-crafted, and Akwaiki Messi is a wonderful writer, so I rated this book three stars. So the next four books here are all a editions of Victor Laval's Destroyer, which is a comic series or graphic novel series, and basically we are following this scientist, um, and it's the apocalypse basically. There is this Frankenstein-like creature that has emerged from the ocean because of the disastrous impact of climate change, and the scientist that used to work for a major corporation that was creating a lot of technology and innovation and um, sort of, you know, forward thinking stuff and really high-tech crazy wild shit she doesn't work anymore and she is now on the run from this corporation which is now trying to basically track her down and make her work for them or some other some other thing but the thing is is that this woman is a black woman whose son when he was 12 was murdered by the police and because she is a an incredibly intelligent scientist and has such an ability to like master and manipulate technology she's basically like revived her son through nanotechnology and this story like and the graphic novel as like aspect of it like all of the illustrations is incredible I think that this as a comic series works so well because there are so many different elements at play different characters that are really engaging relationship lines that are so cool to see play out and a plot line that's intriguing and really dark and gritty and this setting that is like realistic but also like science science fiction -y enough for it to be like really cool i don't know it kind of gives me like nostalgia for books when i was a kid that like i read and really enjoyed like i forget what it's called but there's this one almost superhero like series that was um featuring the spy agent blonde kid named alex and like this book this graphic novel series gives me the same vibes as those books that i read when i was a kid it's really good and I think that the art, the story, everything is super compelling but obviously since each of these comics are like what like 20-30 pages each I didn't rate each and every one of them but like if I had to rate this as a series or as a graphic novel sort of you know like collection you know comic series I would definitely give it like four stars. So the last book on this wrap up this mid-month wrap up I have to talk about is Who Fears Death by Nnedi Okorafor. This book took me a while to get through through because it was so dark and filled with violence, sexual violence, physical violence, like brutality and war and I mean it was everything. It was filled with a lot of violence and conflict but I think that the concept was really like big-brained and I've read some of other Nettie Okorafor's works and like I should have really expected it because her writing is really spectacular but with this book I because I was kind of tapped out and repulsed by the level of violence from at the beginning and the characters being played out I couldn't keep straight in my head a lot of these different characters and their names and like who they were I couldn't quite understand the ways in which the plot was moving back and forth and I really wasn't grasping onto what the book was trying to get at like thematically I I didn't really get any of that until like the very end and only and at that point it was only even a little like I didn't even fully grasp with this, this book I think that I would have to reread this book to be able to like really understand what the hell happened and what like really went on and because of that I can acknowledge that this book is like really good and as like a sci-fi fantasy literature it's really engaging but I only could give it three stars because it was just a little bit too like big brained and expansive and just wild for me as a reader to like quite understand. Those are the books that I've read so far and the other books that I am currently reading or that I started earlier this month and I'm still reading right now include Black Buck by Matteo Escaripor. I am 
can you see this far into it so I only have a little bit more to go like a third of the book to until I finish it and so far I am loving this like this book is wild it's bonkers like the ride that this book is taking me on I don't even know but it's also making me really really mad everything that our main character does it's basically like watching someone make all of the worst decisions and screw over themselves and their whole lives and then them thinking that they are doing the best possible thing for themselves and everyone around them and the whole time you're like no no stop it you suck so bad no it's a descent into madness but it's really engaging and i think that what it's ultimately saying the commentary about capitalism and the absurdity of it the absurdity of like making immense amounts of money and corporations and the idea of like working hard working your way to the top a lot of what it's saying here is really fascinating and i think it's doing a pretty good job at what it's trying to do because i am repulsed i am repulsed by our main character and by all the actions he is taking so oh wait i never even explained the concept of this book well actually i think i talked a little bit about it in my tbr so you know go watch it if you haven't already but basically we're following this black man who works at a starbucks he's chilling in his life and then he um gets like suddenly recruited one day to join this sales company and then things unravel from there so <laughs> this book is it's crazy it's very wild and I'm excited to finish this. I think I'm gonna try to finish it today. We'll see, we'll, we'll see. Oh yeah, follow me on Goodreads if you wanna see my live updates for the books I'm reading, because I, unlike other and probably like smarter booktubers, I never really hide what I'm reading from Goodreads. I keep it updated consistently, just because if I don't, there's no other way that I'm gonna be able to track my own reading. Like, Goodreads is how I track my reading. That's always linked in my description box if you ever wanna follow me there. And the final book I'm gonna be talking about today is another book that I'm currently reading. I am like in the midst of, I'm like 25% of the way through the audiobook of this. And that is Do You Dream of Terra 2 by Temi O. Oh. Basically, this is set in the UK and then space. So <laughs> there is this really prestigious school and program where a bunch of teenagers go and at the very beginning of the book we finally get to see who is getting picked for our Terra 2 space program. Basically in this world um, there is uh, another earth in our solar system that is basically like a replication or a better version of planet earth. Has like water, air, mountains, plants, whatever, wildlife, things like that. And so basically there's a project to colonize Terra 2 by sending like six really talented young um, astronomers and sending them off into space, launching them there, getting there and, you know, starting to categorize all the plant life. So all these kids are really intelligent, really resourceful, very strong, and they're being sent off into space. So this book so far is really engaging and really just like, I don't know, very intelligent, I think. And the way that these characters are being explored and the way that like the trauma and the reality and the weight of like going to space for 40 years to travel to another planet never seeing anyone from your home planet ever again not leaving everything you know as like a teenager and preparing your whole life for that wow like the way that our author explores that is really profound and feels really realistic so so far i'm really enjoying this and i hope that the rest of this book plays out in a way that is still very engaging for me those are all the books that i've read so far in february hopefully i can finish the like six other books that are still on my tbr that i need to get to but so far i have knocked out one, two, three, four, five. I've knocked out five books on this TBR. So, you know, we still have like 12 days left of this month. Maybe we can, maybe we can finish this. Maybe this can be done. <laughs> so yeah, thank you so much for watching. Um, like, comment, subscribe, all the stupid bullshit. All my social medias are always linked down in the description below. And I will see you in my next video. Bye.